Hello and welcome to this episode of A Day in the Life Of. Today we've got the great pleasure to talk to Jade Aquiga, who I met at a BRM UK community event uh, very recently and got to hear him speak. So we were very lucky and we thought we'd share it with you as well. Jade, can I hand over to you to tell us a bit about yourself and a little bit about your background, please? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So um, I'm Jade Aquiga. Uh, I'm an IT BRM, currently working at Allen & Overy. Uh, I started my career as a as a management accountant, um, working at KPMG for about uh, 14 years, 11 of those um, in, in finance, and then I moved into IT, my first year as a business analyst, um, um, and then into the BRM role, and, and I've been a, been a BRM ever ever since, uh, and then moved to, to BDO, uh, where we established the BRM function there. And then last February, just before the pandemic, moved to Allen and Overy, uh, where, where I currently work. Thanks very much, Jade. Can you share a little bit about your BRM journey to date? How did you get here? Absolutely. Um, I, as I said, I started off as a, as a, as a management accountant previously, uh, working in finance. Um, and and there, were, there, there were a lot of, um, I guess, crossover um, capabilities actually between um, team being the management accountant uh, and looking after budgets and se- essentially working with stakeholders, senior stakeholders, helping them plan, having to say no, you can't spend X amount, you know, and, and that's which is quite challenging dealing with um, with partners who you know essentially own the business. Um, but um, I I always felt I wanted to do something outside of accounting. Um, and and I looked for opportunities to to move into IT because I did my my degree in business information systems and IT. Um, and I think I've mentioned before on 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 the talk that we did that if I had known that the BRM role existed when I'd left university many many years ago, I probably would have pursued pursued that. Um, and so fortunately, you know, after after making it known what my what my intentions were, KPMG were were really really good in helping me transition from accounting into IT. And I started off, started off as a business analyst, and I was really looking at because I didn't know much about the IT function, so I was looking more for a strategic role, which is which is uh, you know kind of akin to the role I was doing previously as a management accountant. Um, and so I went with the you know did a little bit of research. You know the the the, the BA role seemed like the right fit and so I did the diploma in business analysis with with the BCS um, and they were pitching it at a, at a more strategic role than, than it actually was so but it made a great transition transitory role for me because I now went into in, into into the IT department as a as a BA um, which taught me lots in terms of how to elicit requirements and how to understand um, how to ask more probing questions around business requirements but it wasn't strategic enough for me. It wasn't at the level which I I had previously been working, um, and so when we had some external consultants come in, uh, make some recommendations around how the IT department should work. Uh, one, one of the things they mentioned was was to establish a business engagement function, and uh, we were previously called business engagement managers because it, it never really existed um, at KPMG previously, and so. Um, yeah, so when they recommended the, the function, the, the head of my area, you know, wanted me to, to be part of that, that role. I looked into it a little bit more to understand what it was, and I thought, oh, this this seems perfect to me, where I straddle, you know, um, the fence, and I get to be kind of part of the business and part of IT, but really I don't have to be technical for the role, because I'm not. And so... Um, <laughs> and so they established the role, I, I went for it, and then we started looking about how we build that build the team and who we need to bring in. And so there were a couple of us who were inexperienced, which is my direct line manager and myself. And then we said, right, we need a couple of other people who are more experienced in this role. And so, so we, we went about looking for um, so more experienced BRMs to help us shape and and, uh, and form and form the role. So we, so we did that. Uh, and then moved to BDO, where it was, again, the function didn't exist. Um, so we went in. Well, I went in, um, I had a direct line manager and we started to build out the team um, and, and it really took off, took off from there. So when you say that you went in and then they, they didn't really have the function, how do you start a function like that in a company? How do you get going? Yeah. So the first thing from my experience is that you, you, want, to, you want to make sure that it's something that the organisation needs, right? So not just 
within IT, but the business are wanting to engage with technology. So I found that BDO and at KPMG that there was an appetite to engage with technology. Um, you know, um, there was a there was a there was a hunger. You know, they, they, they were interested in technology, but they just needed people to provide um, or to be able to articulate what it is that the business side of things needed. And when you say to engage with technology, what, what do you mean by that? Is understand how technology can support them, right? So every, everybody's looking to, you're either trying to grow your business, you want to be, make it more efficient, you want to do more with less, and you want the right tools to be able to do that. So it's understanding what, well, what is there, how can we be better, um, and how do we move things forward? Uh, where does technology play a part in this? So there are, so there are business leaders, and if and I guess if you're in business, you really ought to be thinking about how you, how you get better, right? Because there are other people, and there are other you know startups who are working on things that can eat into your in, into into your into your um, um you know into your share of of whatever you know industry in, in which in which one works. So. So there was a huge appetite for people of, um, that people had um, wanting to know more about technology and how they can improve. And so starting off the function, one, you need that. There's got to be an appetite from the organization, I find. And then two, the, which is probably the more difficult part, is actually finding people who can be BRMs or who've been BRMs in the past and understand the role. Um, I, I remember my previous manager had said to me that b before hiring me, uh, she had spoken to about 30 people uh, and and either they they had no real clues to what the role was, um, or they they were working at, at a much um, at a very operational level. Um, I think that that probably leads us very nicely into what what is the role of a BRM? What 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 does a day in the life of a BRM look like? So essentially, the the role is not complicated. I, I think you know we do um, you know you have courses and you have all these different things which are great, but the role itself is not very complicated. Essentially, if you break it down to its constituent elements, it's it's really being somebody who can articulate the business uh, organizational goals, someone who can articulate the IT strategy and capability, and essentially you're marrying the two so that both inform each other. Um, and you are you are able to help the business navigate IT, uh, and when I say business, I'm talking about those who are kind of you know the, the you know the client facing side of things, the guys who actually do the work to bring the money in, um, help them to understand how the IT department works, why why it is that they can't have certain tools, um, um, and and to also manage the demand that comes in from those from those guys um, into the tech, into the into the IT department. And also to communicate the technology strategy back upwards as well. Um, so, so you effectively you're wearing you're an arm you're a soldier wearing you know you know two different uniforms you know split you know split in half. One's the business side and one's the IT side, and and you have to bridge that gap between between the two um, functions. I love that analogy. <laughs> I absolutely love that. So I guess on on a, on a typical day um, for for a BRM, and it's quite hard to say a typical day because no two days are essentially the same. <laughs> But uh, I guess depending on, on how long you've been in the role and the, the level of relationships you've built, um, for me personally, most days will, will involve meetings of some sort, whether it's you know, at a strategic level, where are we getting to, what are we trying to do, and where, where are we on the, the actions and, uh, that, we, that we'd noted previously. Uh, sometimes it's, it's queries coming in from somebody asking, well, actually, you know, I've heard that IT are doing X, Y, and Z, or there's this technology. Um, is it something that we can use? Having conversations with the technical team, um, some queries come up. And again, I've said before, I'm not technical, so I, I, I'm not a solutions designer either. And I think it's important for, for people in the BRM to recognize that they're not solutions designers. There are technical people for that. Our job is to make sure that we articulate the business need and requirement to those individuals who then come up with the solutions. So, um, so again, yeah, the questions might be around, um, can we have X, Y, and Z, um, which we know doesn't fit into our maybe technology strategy, or, or if, say, for instance, if we're a Microsoft house and somebody wants to use a tool that we already have as a Microsoft as a Microsoft house, and and, and you know that tool is, doesn't form part of the Microsoft suite, then then it's having those conversations and, and being able to, you know, um, 
gently and politely say no, that you can't have those. But you can have something else that works equally as well. So um, a lot of it is, is, is spending time talking to the business and IT. I mean, it's, like I said, it's not, it's not, it's not rocket science. It's, uh, it's, main, it's keeping the, the channels of communication open. And the need for the BRM is to save IT time and stop them being bogged down with those queries. And you're, are you translating for people, perhaps? Well, if I, uh, the way I've got in, in the past and, and, and mentioned to the IT department is if the BRM is doing the job really well, right, the function, not just the individual, um, if it's doing its job really well, then only projects only the good projects should come through the ones that we think are the right things to do because we should have to stop those and say right actually that that doesn't quite work or it doesn't you know it's not a revenue generator it's not a legal um requirement there's no risk issues that we're trying to address by by implementing this tool it's it's basically something that you just fancy or you've seen someone else have and you want to have it as well it doesn't make any sense so really we should be able to kind of sift through the demand so that only the the relevant stuff the stuff that will benefit the organization as a whole um comes through into comes through into it and, and obviously there are there are there are you know there are very many reasons why some things get pushed through because somebody's senior and they just decide they want to do it and they go above everyone's heads and get it done but for the most part that's that's where we're working um and also if there are major issues with service um, that um, the business are facing, um, then we we tend to kind of stand in the gap there and try and, and, try and make things happen uh, quicker to resolve those issues, particularly if they're, if they're long-standing ones. Okay, that makes good sense. So it sounds like you're quite your visionaries as well uh, somewhere in there to, to to make sure that you're you're having a look at something right from the beginning all the way to the end to make sure that you're not launching things that 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 sort of get pulled at 75% of yeah. the way through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. you know, you have to be a little bit of an entrepreneur, I think, as a as a, as a a BRM. Um, you have to spot opportunities. You have to, you know, and that comes from understanding how the business work and how those, you know, those client-facing individuals, how they work and what, what is the what is the goal of the organization? What is the goal of the business? And, and once you start to understand that, um, and you understand some of the things that happen in, in the in the market as well. You, you know, you, at times you can come up with ideas about, oh, we could do this or we could do that to 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 support the business, um, and um, and make them a bit more profitable. <laughs> it must become second nature, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, so, Jade, I think you went on to take the CBRM Certified Business Relationship Manager qualification. Yes, absolutely, which is Congratulations. great. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's a whole new level up from the BRMP, the Business yeah. Relationship Management yeah. Professional. Yeah. So um, can you um, tell me how that has helped you um, in your career? How, how have the skills and the training helped you in your career? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I think when you come into when you set up a new function, you want everyone speaking the same language. Okay, so the, the BRMP gives you that kind of foundational understanding of, of what it what it is that this this role is. What, what are we trying to do? Where do we fit into the organisation? And then, you know, after after some time, a bit more experience, you know, and there's there's always a difference between the the theory and the practice and, and and the practicality of things, right? Particularly if you you know depend on on what organisation you, you work for, because we, we all work in div- diverse industries and diverse organisations, so there's always that reality the reality factor to it as well. So you need a theory, I think that's a good foundation, and then you build upon that with 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 your um, with your experience, and then the CBRM is where you've you've had some of that BRM experience. Now you you you're used to the, to the you know the, the lingo, the um, the terminologies, what the role's supposed to be. And it's it's for those who are a little bit more experienced in the role now. Um, and, and for me, one of the, one of the key takeaway takeaway is is when you do the course, it's the other BRMs that are on the course as well, um, and learning from their experience and and their insight. And in fact, a lot when I did the CBRM, there was a, there was a guy on there who wasn't a BRM, but he he had probably I think a bit more of a technical um, project manager background. So there was stuff to learn off of him as well, and he was very very knowledgeable. I think around security, IT security. Um, 
but but it just it, it helps you to develop and to grow because you don't want to stay still in this role i don't think it's a role in which you can stay you know stagnant you, you have to be constantly kind of moving and adapting and learning and, and the CBRM gives you that platform to move to the next level in terms of your knowledge what would you say to individuals that were looking to come into the BRM role and would you recommend training and certification to others yeah um but bearing in mind i i, I the, the key word right the central word in the BRM is relationships right i, I personally believe you have to have um an interest a love a passion for working with people and um, meeting new people and um, and building relationships because no one's going to share the strategic objectives with you if they don't like you if they don't trust you if, if they feel that you 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 know you're fake or you know you're simply wanting to get their attention to achieve some kind of end goal right you have to have a genuine interest in people I find anyway that's that's my perspective <laughs> on it um, and the second thing is you have to you have to have a you have to have a strategic mindset. Now that doesn't mean we don't deal with operational issues because again, if you if I walk into the to the office of a MD or a, of a partner and they they're really struggling with their Wi-Fi, they're not interested in talking about strategy right there. It's it's how do we get this sorted? And we can point them to the right people. We don't do it ourselves, but we point to the right people. Um, and of course. As I said, I'm a stickler for foundation, right? So doing the BRMP, getting the foundation, understanding what the role is. I, I think there are lots of organizations that say they have BRMs, but they don't really because they're not speaking the language of the industry. They're not they're not doing the role. They, they may be more service delivery managers, which is something completely different from a BRM. So it's it's getting the foundation, understanding what that role is, having a passion for working with people, um, strategizing and dealing with uh, and, you know, problem resolution, right? Um, those are the things that I would say you need if you're, if you're going to come into the BRM role. Uh, and certification, uh, again, stickler for foundation, get, get the theory right, get the understanding right, and that will help you to build a, a successful career, I think. And uh, I think um, that, you know, that fantastic event um, that there was, there were so, so many insights there. I think one of the things that uh, resonated with me that someone said with regards to the BRM role is it is a strategic role. Um, you know, you really are helping people a again, you know, I'm repeating with their vision and I'm hearing what you're saying um, about that, that inherent uh, interest in relationships and, and building those relationships with people but um, someone said and I, I can't recall who it was but something like um, it, it's not up to you to do the fixing however if the person that you're talking to as you've just said has got a, a, a printer error in front of them and they're distracted if it's something that you can do you might as well spend your time doing that and then you've got your attention there and then you've sort of um, got somebody on your side and and I thought that was a great bit of advice. You know, you 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 never too sort of far up the ladder. Yeah, I, 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 exactly. Like, you know, I think in, in the course I'd mentioned, or also in the webinar I'd mentioned, one of the key you know um, characteristics is is the ability to empathise, right? So we've all been customers, and, and if I have a problem with my car and I drive it into the to the, you know, to the garage, I just want that fixed before they start yeah. telling me about their future plans for growth and how that's <laughs> going to benefit me in the future. Well, that's great and wonderful, but can you please fix my car because I need it right yeah. now? So, again, it shouldn't be a foreign concept if you can empathise with, you know, with, you know, with the, you know, the business user on, on what their issues are. Then it shouldn't it shouldn't be a difficult thing to to, you know, to to understand that you need to deal with the, that operational issue before we can start to deal with more kind of strategic items. That's that's um, uh, some really good and sound advice. You're a member of the BRM Institute, Jade. Um, how have they helped you in the role and, and how have the resources helped you? And what, what are they? Yeah, um, so the, the, the BRM Institute is a professional body um, that helps to kind of govern and provide direction on what the BRM role looks like and it's it's great and it's needed um, being a member of the Institute means you have access to BRMs all over the globe right um, and there is there are knowledge articles there are people who are 
you know, super way, way more experienced than I am, you know, providing advice um, and people raise questions. And it's just a great little network of, of BRMs and where we can learn from each other and share. And there are great resources on there that will help you. There are templates on there that if you need to download that you can use um, for, you know, in your organization and, and adapt it. And they're not, pr you know, they're not precious about you know, how the templates look is, you know, they are templates and you can adapt it as, as you need in your organization. So, the, you know, the Bureau Ministry is, is a fantastic body. Um, it's great to have that professionalism um, and that there are people who are thinking about where the role's going and where it should be. Um, and I got pulled up a couple of times on, on the language I've used um, during the webinar, which is fine. And it's great because it's, you, you want to learn, right? You want to progress and you and you want you want the BRM role to be the best that you, that you, that you it can possibly be because uh, there's so much value in what a, what a BRM brings to an organization if if they are utilized in the right way. So I'm all for, you know, certifications, being members, uh, being a member of, of the Institute um, and, and networking as well with, with other BRMs. And uh, well, going back to what we said, that's that's where we met um, and you volunteered your time. You did an excellent webinar. You were great fun Thank to you. be involved with at that event. Um, and we'll put we'll put some links to those events below. Um, Jade, thank you so very much for your time. Um, I am hoping that you'll say yes if people want to reach out to you on LinkedIn and find out a bit more about the role uh, if they're interested in in taking it up and uh, we'll also leave some links to uh, some of the communities that have been set up that people can join if they want to yeah absolutely happy to help anyone on their journey um i had help so i'm happy to give it as well and it's a pleasure talking to your star as always thank you for having me great pleasure to talk to you thank you very much indeed